Brando just informed me that he has finished the back door. I know we were looking at the driver's side, but one thing led to another and we got caught up. So this is what the passenger side looks like, which is identical to the driver's side. We've added in the fast ring, our mount. He's added in his connectors right here. And of course, to the full baked potato on the door panel. Looking ultra sexy. With all the speakers out of the way, it's time to get back into the back of the car and concentrate on DSP location, amplifier location, and getting all those brackets made. We got a stack of goodness here. Let's come back to the bench. and We'll take a look at what we're putting in this thing for power. DSP. First up is the DSP, which is just simply the Brax DSP. Brax only makes one DSP, and this is it. This is number 923 of the batch. Comes in the wood box. First thing on top is a t-shirt in large. Then the owner's manual, they're again signed. Each one of these is handmade specifically for the application you're going to be putting it in. When you decide to buy one of these, they send you a sheet like this and you fill it out with what pieces you want to go into it. Each part in this is also hand-picked specifically for these processors. Inside is the big heavy DSP. The same is a monster As you see it is quite thick coming in at two and a quarter inches the overall length is 12 and a quarter by eight you definitely need room to install this somewhere in the vehicle this we had designed for optical input and then they just filled in the rear with the analog style inputs on the back of the unit it also gives you a general idea of how you can build this unit out with both analog or digital inputs and analog and digital output for the output, we are straight RCAs going to our amplifiers. In the box, you'll also find some Allen keys and the USB connector that we will be installing in the vehicle with this unit. Amplifier wise, we'll be going with two of these, the GX2400. This is serial number 1360. The other one is 1359. It is... <laughs> 473 millimeters long. This is a big boy amplifier for sure. It's a four channel amplifier. It comes with a shirt as well. They're again large. Underneath the shirt, we find our materials. First, the owner's manual that on page 13 starts the English portion of it. Congratulations on your purchase of this high quality Brax amplifier. Gives us the basic layout as far as whether you're using the mono block or the four channel and some pictures of the inside with notes corresponding to what each one of the features is and then some general instructions on how to connect the amplifier. You also get all the audio precision burn-in sheets to tell you how the amplifier tested. A little bit better than just a power rating for sure. Then underneath is is the gigantic amplifier. Also in the box over here in the corner is a set of Allen keys. For those of you not up to doing the conversion rate from millimeters to inches, this is 18 and a half inches long and nine and a half inches wide and two and a quarter inches deep. Very similar in shape to the DSP, which if we bring up next to it, it's the same height, however, it is a little bit differently shaped. The way this amplifier breaks down is you have the power on this end, you have the speaker and RCAs on this end. As expected, this amplifier is a little bit different than your standard amplifier, just a little. Closer look through the amplifier, you'll see you have some options located at the bottom of the amp. Mono, bridged, stereo bridged, or stereo for both channels one and two and three and four. We are gonna be running the stereo, so we can leave that in the factory setting. The power wires are gonna be installed into this before you mount this down because of the way the heatsink is designed. And it does have two sets of inputs. However, this is the actual main input. This is for the optional stiffening capacitor that you can add to the amplifier. And I know, like me, you're dying to see what this looks like inside. So let's pop the top on this and check it out. It has 10 two millimeter Allen screws. And in case you're wondering, with the full audio precision test that they shipped with this, there's really no point in us doing an amp dyno on it. They've done more than enough testing on the amplifier to I think get the point across how much power and performance this amplifier actually has. Once those are removed, there's also four Phillips screws located here on the end. With the top removed, so starting here at your audio section, we'll slowly pan across the top of this.
Definitely a super sexy amplifier. It does have internal fuses located here. It just kind of cleans up the whole look at the outside of the amplifier. All right, that's enough looky loo time. Let's get the top back on. One other part of the amplifier I wanted to show you is this cool metal bracket here. You can unscrew it and flip it to whatever direction you want, but what it's hiding is the gain section. It's a four channel amplifier. Of course, that means it has four gains for it. And that leaves just the sub to show you guys. Let's take a look at the sub amp we're gonna be using. Now, even though Brax makes a matching sub amplifier, we just couldn't get the right ohm load and with the subs that we wanted to use. What that meant is we stepped down to the Helix C1 amplifier to power the subs. And this thing is big and sexy also. Opening it up, top piece of foam, and then the instruction manual. Now what I like about the C series amplifiers is that they do have this plexi cover right away. We don't have to take anything off. Allen keys, and these things are also really thin for the amount of power they put out. Just under an inch and a half. They are super long though, at 17 inches. And the width is nine and a half. Let's take a closer look at the amplifier. Ground, power, remote on this end. Tell it what ohm load you're gonna be connecting to it. One, two, or four. Let's take a quick look at the owner's manual. See some of the cool specifications that this amplifier has. One of the options for this, you can do a Tosh Link input. So you can come out and go Tosh Link into this amplifier if you need to. We will be using the RCAs. There is a selector here for both stereo or mono input. It's a mono amplifier, but if you're going to be running one RCA or two RCAs, it gives you the option to tell it that. There is a master slave function. If you're going to be running multiples of these, it has a a phase control adjustment on the side here between zero and 180. There's also a bass boost where you get to pick the center frequency between 40 and 120, as well as the gain for it. Let's do the slow pan across the top of the amplifier to give you guys a closer view of this particular amplifier. Looking at the end plate, this is the output to go to the partner amp, your bass knob, input, low pass, high pass, output, phase, frequency, and gain adjust. Quick look at the other end, input A, input B, and your inputs for power. Now that we know all the equipment that we're gonna be putting in the car, I have to hop into the back and figure out where am I gonna put all this stuff? How's it gonna fit? It's gonna be a struggle, there's no doubt about it. We kinda knew that going into this. They make a level up from this amplifier, but they're, they're way too big to actually fit inside here where we need them to go, so we went with the smaller ones. We settled, I know crazy. This is the space I have to work with. This is the hybrid battery and this was the factory subwoofer and the spare tire assembly went here. Three giant amplifiers and a giant DSP that all need to go somewhere in this back area. And then we also have this area here where the factory amplifier was if we need it. Each one of these amplifiers is just big and heavy. And the other thing I have to keep in mind is I have to get this off in order to set my gains. Covering them might not be such a great idea, which was my initial plan, which is stack all three of them on top of one another. But I didn't know that's what I was gonna have to do and removing each one to set the gains and whatnot just seems like a really hard time. So I've kind of rethought the process. Maybe staggering them would be a better idea, starting with one of the 2400s here off to the side. Then my DSP going in this area here. All of my connections for the DSP are going to be on this side. These are the outputs going to the amplifier. The only thing that's going to go on this side is the power ground remote and the Tosh Link input. These others aren't going to be used. If need be, I can cover those and then add the other amplifier into the mix like this. That way I have access to both of my gains. Once I plug the USB into the DSP, I really won't have to get to it for anything. That would mean I would have to take this C1 amplifier and put it where the factory amplifier was. After staring at this for an hour or so and moving the amplifiers around and just seeing what would work, this seems to be the best option and then putting the power distribution up here. Either way, what I want to do first is get my floor and my back piece made so at least I have a practical idea of where everything is going to go. For that, I'm going to be using the half inch Centra because I want the thickness and the rigidity of it and I'll be stacking layers to make it fit how I want. Let me get this out of here. I'll get some measurements. 